Hi, this is Shane Smythe from Marketing Cloud Mojo. Today we'll be talking about data extensions and lists. We'll be talking about best practices on each of these and we'll be going through some situations today. There are two ways inside of Marketing Cloud to store data. There's data extensions and there's lists. They both have their pros and cons. So what I'm gonna to do today is kind of explain the differences between the two of them and when to use which. There are a few other situations where you, you'll have all subscribers and publication lists in the mix but those will be a different topic for another day. So let's get right into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go into subscribers and lists. This is where you're gonna see all of the lists in your account. Right now we only have one list called weekly newsletter. And if we click in there, it actually shows that we have an account of zero subscribers. But you'll quickly see that there's all these columns in here. There's email address, their status, their subscriber key, there's create a date. And as we add individuals, records will start populating down below. So think of this kind of like a Excel file right now. So if we go to the top right hand corner, we can create a one off subscriber. So we'll go through these steps right here. So we're going to create a net new individual. So we'll call this Shane at example com. And my email address will be the same thing. So you'll notice there's two required fields here. There's the email address, which is very apparent what it is. There's also this concept of subscriber key. So inside of Marketing Cloud, <clears throat> there's a concept of subscriber key, which is the unique identifier of the system. This could be the email address, like it is in this example, or it could be an external ID that you know is used across the enterprise, or it could be, if you're attached to Salesforce, the Salesforce 18-digit contact or lead ID. So this is a very important concept that we'll probably dig into a little bit later in this video as well, and then probably again in a different topic or uh, video. So if we scroll down here to the bottom, we also see that there are a couple other attributes that we can add about this individual. So I'm gonna add my own information here. And I'm not gonna add my Dataverse, uh, but we'll have different um, attributes for preferences down below. So you know we have the HTML uh, emails and we also have monthly newsletters. So I'm gonna click both of these and then we'll go next. Well, this is actually a, a good example of new features that have been turned on inside of Marketing Cloud. So because example.com is part of a spam filter that is automatically uh, inserted into Marketing Cloud, I'm not able to use this email address. I'm gonna change this to gmail.com we're gonna see if that passes the sniff test. All right, it did. So we're adding it to our weekly newsletter list that we were talking about earlier, and we'll click Finish. Okay, so if we pop out, we'll notice that this changed from a zero to a one now. So we're gonna go back in and we'll see that, hey, now we have a record. So, you know, we can do these one-off sends. This is not gonna be how you actually operate inside of Marketing Cloud for either data extensions or list, but purely for uh, demonstration purposes um, for this case. Uh, normally they'd be added through you know, API call or a form submission or a batch load of an Excel file of some sort um, and you'd you know, be able to get a lot more people in there at once. You'll also notice on the right hand side we have a lot of other fields that we didn't see in that wizard creation. These are all the other fields that we need to kind of manage this list as its own entity. So this is the concept of a list. Um, there's some limitations that everyone should know as you guys are looking at lists. There's a population count of 500,000 as a max. So if you have a audience that is bigger than 500,000, lists are automatically excluded. You won't be able to use them. Um, and there are a few other things in there as well. The other main one that I wanna kinda point out is information about the individuals and in lists are only about the individuals. So it's all about subscribers. Um, you can't put other information in there besides your subscriber information. So to give an example, um, you know, what, what if we had our subscribers and we had all those individuals in there, but we also wanted to have information about our orders or our store, local stores. Um, it would be very difficult to do that inside of a list structure. Conversely though, data extensions are made like that. So if you've never had any experience with you know, like SQL databases or traditional table structures, 
um, think of data extensions as Excel files. Uh, data extensions are flexible table or Excel file structure where you can put any information you want in there. You can put your context information there, you can put your lead information there, your order information, your store information, anything that you need to make your emails personalized and dynamic or to you know fuel your journeys in future topics we'll talk about that um, you can make in data extension so they're very flexible in that nature so I'm gonna quickly just talk a little bit about the stuff on the screen you're, you're seeing right now the first one is all context this is a very common data extension that we use to kind of illustrate all of our context in the account um, you'll also notice a data extension down here called orders these are all the orders that all these individuals have accumulated over time. So this is a demo instance. We have a very low record count. But to give it an example, if we dig into our all contacts, you'll see that we have subscriber key, email address, first and last name. Those are all the same fields that were on the list. But you know, then you'll start to see a couple other ones. You'll see city, and state, and country, and phone. And all that information could be added to a list as well. When it really starts to diversify a little bit is when we go into orders. In orders, we're starting to see order ID and subscriber key and total and quantity and order date. As we're going to our records, you'll also notice that, hey, a couple of these rows have the same subscriber key, meaning they're the same individual, but they've ordered on different days with different quantities and different totals. So because we're able to do this set of data extensions, we're able to say there's one contact in the all contacts, but there's many records over here in the order table. So that's kind of the some of the differences between data extensions and lists. So I'm gonna go through a quick creation of a data extension to kind of illustrate some of the things that go on as you create these data extensions. So if you go to the top right hand corner, you'll see create, which will pop up the screen about these different types of data extensions. We'll go into these two in a later topic. So we're gonna click standard data extensions. The first thing you see on the screen is gonna be the creation method. Probably 90, 85% of the time you're gonna do create from new. But there is the option to do create from existing and create from template. Uh, create from existing is exactly what it says. If, you know, for instance, we wanted to duplicate our all, all contacts, the same field structure and the same settings and everything, we could do that here very easily. The other one is create from template. This is very important and there are a couple topics we'll dig into later, but the big one here is triggered send template. So as we talk about triggered sends later on, note that when you create the data extension to store the information, there's a template here for that. Okay, so we're gonna click from new and we're gonna do a new data extension called stores. So the name is simply that, it's a display name inside of Marketing Cloud for your use only. Then the next field is external key. External key is the identifier that is used if you're accessing this data extension through any API. Um, so normally you could just, you could leave it blank and it will create a, a random string of, of um, characters that will provide you know, an external unique ID. We're just gonna call this stores because we know that's gonna be unique in our instance. The description for you to kind of use uh, at your discretion. And then there is the sendable is sendable. This is sendable is very important. So some data extensions you're going to actually send to an audience. So a good example is our all contacts. Our all contacts is a sendable data extension, meaning that we are able to send emails to this audience and this set of individuals. And then there's others, such as the case we're talking about right now, where we would never be sending to stores. We'd be sending to the customers, the contacts, but not the stores. So we're not gonna leave, we're not gonna check this right now. So we're gonna click next. This next page is uh, for data retention policy. A data retention policy is the ability for your records to automatically roll off after a certain amount of time. There are very specific use cases for this. Um, we're not gonna go too much into this right now, but just know that you do have the ability to roll records off as they expire if you want to. And this kind of helps keep the amount of data you keep inside of data extensions down because if you have something you use and, and um, consistently uh, put data into, it can get very large and then the performance of 
your instance will go down. So this next section is all about fields. So this is the meat of, of creating a data extension. So for our stores, we're going to create a, a store ID. We're going to have the store ID. We're going to have the store name. And maybe we'll have the store uh, state. And so for our, uh, we'll actually do one more. So we'll have store ID, store name, store state, and uh, opened date. Or maybe we'll call this store open date to keep it consistent. Uh, so you'll see that you know we're able to create as many fields as we want on the left hand side here, and then on the right hand side you'll see that there are a couple of fields we'll uh, walk through. So first one is data type. You have the option to go from text to number to date to boolean, email address, phone, decimal, and locale. Um, so in this case, we'll leave this as a text, and we know from our system, you know, in our test instance, that our store is going to be populated through an external system that holds this information. And we know that this ID is, is an 18-digit ID, so we're going to have the length of 18 digits here. This is kind of where you're able to uh, create your settings about your data extension, your structure, to keep the size of the data extension smaller. We also know that this ID is unique. Um, so here is where you can mark the primary key. So there, there's going to be a lot of keys you know, here as you're working with these systems. Subscriber key is different than primary key. So uh, primary key is, is the unique identifier of this data extension, um, and it cannot be a record cannot be duplicated with that same primary key in the data extension itself. So if we had store, two stores, they both couldn't have the ID of one. One would have to be one, one would have to be two. So we'll do a primary key, and then we have the name. Um, let's say that our name needs a 100, because some of our names are really long. And then our store is actually uh, the two-digit code, so we're going to have this be 2. And then this last one, we actually are doing a date field here, so we're going to click date. Um, so you also have the ability to um, default this with a date. This little button that pops up here, this little thing, if you click it, it actually puts in the current date. So we're not going to use it for this specific case right here, but in some cases, you want to know when the record was added to Marketing Cloud. So you could use this little button right here to automatically append the created date, uh, which is very useful in some circumstances. So we're going to remove that. All right, and then we're going to click Create. And there you have it. We have our first data extension that we, we've all created. So now we have stores. All right, so now you have the basics down. So you have the concept of data extensions. You have the concept of lists. The one other thing I wanted to go through real quick was adding and removing data inside of Marketing Cloud. Um, so I, I caution this topic with, in production instances, you should be very careful with the way at which you add and delete data. Um, but there are some simple ways to do it as you're working maybe through some tests or you need to uh, do some cleanup. So if we go to uh, the app switch on the top left hand corner and you go to uh, audience builder and contact builder, contact builder is kind of the backbone of marketing cloud. It's where all the data lives, it's where all the connection lives. Um, you also have a data extension uh, tab up here where you can manage your data extensions. There is one additional feature in Contact Builder that the email studio does not have currently um, that is really useful in this cir uh, circumstance. So if we go to our stores data extension and we click this, we're able to see the same information we just talked about with a, just a slightly different UI. Um, the one difference you will see in this UI that you don't see in the other UI in email studio is this option of add record. So I really like this, uh, this feature here, um, especially for testing. You're able to easily just type in your information like you are with lists. Um, so we'll be able to do, you know, for this, we, I mentioned earlier 18 digits, but for our test, we'll do one. Uh, we'll call this, you know, um, Minnesota store location one. And we'll say this is Minnesota, and we'll say the store opened you know, in July of last year. And we're able to click Save. 
And there you have it, you have one field now. Um, if you ever do need to clear records from a data extension, there is a clear records button here. There's also a clear records in the email studio. There just isn't an add record. Uh, and then the last thing uh, to mention in this UI is this top panel up here. This top panel is actually really useful. So if you have a, a data extension with a lot of information and you just want to see what's in there, you have a specific ID and you just want to see what the values are, instead of going through an entire process of creating you know, a filter, which we'll go into later, and, uh, and you know, anything else of like pulling it down and you know, manually searching it in Excel or anything of that nature, you can go in here and you can toggle through all of your primary keys and you can search. So I could search for one here and click search and it would pull the information for me right there. The other thing that you can do from this top panel right here is you can check the box next to a record and you can edit that record. And you can edit all the fields except for the, the primary key of that, uh, that record. So this is really useful if you need to make some modifications for testing. Uh, also from this top panel up here, you can import and export data. So I'm actually gonna pop back over to Email Studio to show you some information about importing and exporting. So we'll go to our all contacts and we will go over to records and you'll notice, like I mentioned, a couple of uh, similar fields here. You'll see the clear data button over here on the right hand side. And you'll also see the import and export. You'll notice that this does not have search and it does not have add records. That's why I went over to Contact Builder earlier. Um, from here, you are able to export. So if you click this export button, you're able to name the file whatever you want. I'll just you know, call it the name that it is in, in Marketing Cloud. You're able to export it as the specific type of file you want. So in most cases, you'll leave it as CSV. Um, and then you can also do this into browser download. This is the easiest. There are some limitations on sizing of records or sizing of the actual file. If it gets over, I, th I think it's 20 megs, um, it will actually force you to do FTP and then you'll have to go to your, into your FTP and, and download it from there. So we'll do uh, browser download and if we export it, it'll actually pop up right here. And you'll notice that I had already uh, also had it open. So we'll have all this information that we've seen there. And so, you know, I made a comparison earlier that data extensions are essentially, you know, CSV files. This kind of shows you that correlation between the two of them. So the very final thing I kind of want to go through is for those of you who are taking your email specialist or your marketing cloud consultant, this is a really important concept, the difference between lists and data extensions. I actually have a tab open right now from the help page. This is uh, you know, a really important uh, article that kind of talks about how marketing cloud views lists versus data extensions. So see what is a list, what is a data extension, what are some of the best practices. You'll see that 500,000 subscriber limit that I talked about earlier. And you'll kind of see the differences in, of creating and the different aspects of you know, what a list does versus what a data extension does. Um, this is really important. I would encourage you to go here. I would encourage you to read all these and note the differences between lists and data extensions. And if there's something that a list does that a data extension does not do, note it in your mind because there will probably be a question on it or there might be a question on it. Um, so this is an important guide. I, there's a, the link up here. You can simply go to uh, help.salesforce.com and type list versus data extension and you'll be able to find this. All right, that's it for today. So comment if you have any questions, uh, like, share, and uh, appreciate you guys being subscribers.